Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Mark Braund, who is Executive Chairman at React Group. How are you today, Mark? Hey, I'm very well. Good morning to you, Zach. Right, we've um, sort of crossed swords in the past uh, in various guises, but uh, this is your latest company. What's the current situation in terms of where uh, React Group is? We've come off the back of a two-year turnaround. We've got um, a very strong uh, executive management team. Uh, Sean Doak is the CEO, Andrew Pankhurst is the CFO. And what they've done is they've completely rebuilt the business from, from the bottom up. We had a, a great reputation in terms of what we delivered to the customer, which, which I'll talk about in a second, but really had very poor management systems, no sales or account management to speak of, accounting was poor, and basically the company was poorly run. Nothing to do with the operators at the front end of the business, sharp end. And where we are now, well, we're completely transformed sort of two years later. I'll give you the, the sort of high-level stats in a second, if I may, but it's worth me just highlighting exactly what we do because cleaning is uh, broken into a number of different areas. We are not a janitorial cleaning business. We're very much a specialist cleaning business. We work in a number of key areas where we work at the dirty end of the market where a lot of people just aren't qualified to operate uh, or don't wish to. Give you a few quick examples. We, we deep clean hospitals from one end to the other. Um, one of the large hospitals in London we do, we start at the beginning, we start at the front door and work our way to the back door. And by the time we reach the back door, we have to start all over again. And it's a deep clean part of their infection control process. Nothing to do with COVID, although obviously um, COVID has uh, you know, strengthened the process. It's all to do with their infection control. Another area we work is um, in road traffic accidents and on the railways um, where there are uh, fatalities or animal strikes. And um uh, our operators get underneath the carriage and, and clear a lot of unsavoury things from beneath the, the carriageways. A third area we work is in void properties. A lot of housing associations will have properties that have been completely wrecked and our organisation will go in there and, and, and clean it up. Some of them have been abused as drug dens uh, or it might be a crime scene. And we'll go in and clear up not just ordinary waste but hazardous waste and bring the property back to um, the way that it should be. And because that's the sort of work we do, that work has tangible value. You know, there's a material cost in not being able to operate a train because it's hit somebody, open a hospital ward because it's got, um, you know, it's got a problem with MRSA or the likes, um, or occupy property that's there to be uh, to be used commercially. We operate uh, our service very uh, on a very rapid turnaround. We deliver within four hours anywhere in the UK on a 24-7, 365 days of the year basis. And therefore, customers really value the service that we deliver. The addressable market is, is very large. I should add that people may have heard of big cleaning companies like, like Serco, Rent-A-Kill, PHS. Those organizations are very large, multi-million, if not billion pound companies. They don't tend to operate in the space we do. They tend to subcontract that work to companies like ours. And the market is very fragmented. It's made up of uh, tens, if not uh, hundreds of small businesses. And React is fast becoming one of the key names in that place. We think we're the only people that actually deliver nationwide 24-7 uh, within four-hour service. And we deliver to uh, a wide range of, of industries. And those industries now are beginning to consolidate their supply chain. And that's that consolidation of that supply chain that... Um, is seeing the company grow. And we uh, delivered our maiden profit last year after uh, a year and a bit of, of getting to grips with the company. We delivered very strong growth. Our growth was about 42%, 41% in revenue. Uh, we tend to focus on on gross profit. Our growth in gross profit was uh, over 60% last year. And we've moved the dial on our margins. Our margins, are, are, the business was almost giving its service away two years ago. Now it's getting the sort of margins it should do for the value it delivers. It's operating at about 33, 34% uh, gross margin, which compared to janitorial businesses that typically operate around about 10 or 11% is obviously very strong. And as I say, we delivered a maiden profit last year with an operating margin of about 6%. But obviously, as we look forward, we have forecasts in the market to continue some of that growth and deliver an, an even better operating margin going forward. You're at the uh, the dirty end of the cleaning sector, which is a, a concept that hopefully people will remember. You've revamped the management and you have, uh, because of the pricing power being at the dirty end of the cleaning sector gives you, you've actually uh, used the opportunity to raise margins. I presume 
whether COVID is a factor or not in your business, um, obviously it must be to some degree, it has shone a light on your particular company. Uh, so people will be kicking the tires just because it's a, you know, we're in, they think of cleaning at this sort of time. But you presumably have been a beneficiary in this current environment and you will continue to be so. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a, a very good point. COVID, I think, has highlighted the need for hygiene and cleanliness. And we have found ourselves operating almost as consultants in this space as a result of COVID. Now, just to clarify what its impact has been on our results, we we issued our results uh, about six, eight weeks ago. And because we knew that COVID would be a potentially a one-off benefit, we have no idea how long it will last, but certainly we knew it would be just a one-off benefit. We actually carved that business out separately and recorded it. It generated, in terms of COVID-specific work, decontaminating places that had concerned that they'd become contaminated with the, uh, the SARS virus. And that was about 10% of our overall revenue last year. Now, that's in a year where we grew our revenues by 42%. And if you actually remove that revenue from our business, but you also account for the fact that COVID depressed some of our business in some of the sectors, one example of that is in the judiciary, where we do a lot of cell cleaning and transportation vehicle cleaning for the judiciary. That business almost stopped during the middle of last year. If you remove the benefit of COVID, but accept the challenges that it gave the rest of our business, our revenue still grew by 26%, and our profit contribution or gross margin still grew by 41%. We've been a beneficiary, I think, in terms of people's psyche and, and thinking, how do we actually get to grips with this? I think. One of the things that we've been able to promote is the fact that we can deliver anywhere in the UK within four hours. And and that has certainly meant we've been on a lot of people's um, watch list in terms of customers uh, seeking our help and support. But it hasn't had a material impact on our business in terms of the numbers. That the business is growing because of the strategy and because of the value that the company delivers to its customers. So you have the opportunity with your souped up management to get involved in potentially in the uh, in a consolidation of the area that's a crowded space. Is that what we're going to expect over the next uh, sort of the rest of the year, maybe going to next year? Yeah, let me let me give you a few data points to help that. We have 140 customers there or thereabouts. Of those 140 customers, between 25 and 30 are very large organisations. And I'm not counting for one minute here the NHS, which is kind of over 400 organizations in of itself. But we have a lot of very large um, customers that call upon our services. However, we are scratching the surface with them. We're aware, we're aware of one company, for example, that has 600 suppliers that work for them in and around our space. Now, what we believe is that those 25 to 30 companies want to consolidate their supply chains. They want a more reliable, uh, more executable service, and they want it at the right sort of um, the right sort of price. Um, and we last year were able to demonstrate this theory with three companies. We um, we presented on this actually at the um, at the roadshow, which we did publicly as well through Investor Meet. And these three companies, I think two of them were large facility management companies, and one was um, a tier one business in the rail industry, where we demonstrated that we had taken a customer from spending sort of ten or twenty thousand pounds a year with us to, in one instance, I think it was uh, getting on for a million pounds. In the other two instances, it was somewhere between two and three hundred thousand. But these are businesses where we're gaining momentum and the growth will continue. So the opportunity for consolidation is absolutely there. The addressable market is huge, and it's serviced by lots of little small companies. The benefit for us is that we consolidate a number of specialist services, and the list is probably too long to mention, but it's a good 20, 21, 22 different types of services that need to be delivered nationwide. We consolidate that, and we consolidate it on a nationwide basis. There are lots of companies out there that will do something extremely well but they're doing a tight, tight geography, uh, and that's the only thing they do. So the opportunity, we think, for consolidation is there, and that's something that will drive our organic growth. But, of course, we also have made it clear that we now we've got the platform and the management structure and the financing right. You know, We have a strong balance sheet. The acquisitions would also play a, a role, and, and I'm pleased to say that we completed our first acquisition just a couple of weeks ago when we acquired a company by the name of Fidelis. Right, and that, how long will that take to sort of integrate into the system? 
Well, interestingly, this is actually a business that doesn't do what we do. It kind of completes the circle, if you like. So from an integration point of view, it's not as complicated as, as most acquisitions in the, it's really almost like a bolt on, but it's a very similar size to us. It doubles our revenue, it doubles our profit, but they're a, a business that's very focused on what we call maintenance contracts, regular work. Now, something I haven't mentioned, but is in our presentation, is that React, of React's business, about 80% of that is recurring revenue in nature. Of that 80%, half of it is contracted revenue that we get in every week, every month. The other half is where we're the primary supplier of one, in other words, we're the only only go-to point for the customer. And there is a regular theme of business coming through. That judiciary contract I talked about, or bar the pandemic, which you know, generates a certain level of revenue every single month because that's just the trend of the business. So 80% of our revenue is, is, is recurring in nature. Fidelis, 87% of their business is that contracted revenue. And they're very focused in and around two areas that we are attracted to. One is the education market and the other is the healthcare sector. So they've got long-term contracts with recurring revenue, recurring income. The contracts are anywhere between three and seven years in length. No one customer is greater than 8% uh, of their business. Their top 10 customers are accounting for no more than 50% of their revenue. And they've been growing on a similar trajectory to us. So what we've done is we've now just added the, the scope of our business with Fidelis. We have two management teams that are, I think, the best at what they do. And integrating the two isn't a matter of looking for operational synergies, although they will be there. It's a matter of looking for positive sales synergies where customers of React's will want, and we've already got some examples of this beginning to emerge, will want the services that Fidelis do and vice versa. So in terms of actually getting integrated, it's going to be very straightforward. And the process has begun and, and both teams have you know, very excited. The owners uh, or the owner Fidelis has joined the management team. He's rolled some of his equity and he's here. He sees the potential that we've got. We think that one plus one is going to equal more than two. Well, was on that mathematical note, Mark Braun, the Executive Chairman at React Group, thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.